Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into one of the most exciting and sometimes frustrating topics in tech right now, AI. Specifically, I want to talk about the gap between hype and reality of AI in 2025. Don't get me wrong, I freaking love AI. Hopefully you get that from watching my other videos. But there is a growing problem that I'm seeing as I talk to more and more people. And the problem is that the expectations around AI have kind of been blown out of proportion. So if you've ever wondered why AI feels like magic in demos, but really falls flat in real world applications, I mean, think about it. How many applications do you use on a daily basis outside of like the chat prompts we're using actually use AI in a way that you couldn't live without? By the end of this video, you'll understand why building AI products is so much harder than it looks and what it really takes to make them work. Let's start with the hype. AI has been sold kind of as a silver bullet. Money's pouring in like crazy. It's this magical solution that can solve all of our problems overnight. And sure, AI does make things easier, but it's not a cure all. Here's the reality. Prototyping with AI is easy. I mean, really easy. But taking it to production is insanely hard. Think about it. We're working with these gigantic models that have been trained on this enormous corpus of human knowledge. Sometimes maybe even the collective data of humanity distilled into this one entity. And yet we're asking these models to do very specific tasks and we're expecting to control them. Hey, please go generate a subject line or make me a thumbnail for a YouTube video. It's kind of mind blowing if you really think about it. Just because something works in a prototype really does not mean it will work consistently in production. When you build a prototype with generative AI, it's easy to get excited. You see results quickly and they often look amazing. But once you move to production, you enter a whole new world of complexity. For example, let's say you're building an app that uses AI to generate emails. In theory, it sounds simple. Feed the model some prompts, boom, you've got your personalized emails for thousands of users. But in reality, it's messy. Let's say out of 100,000 emails, there's mistakes. Some might have completely broken layouts. Others might hallucinate completely made up content. And if you're automating this process, you could end up sending out half a million busted emails without even realizing it until it's too late. And then there's the issue of reliability. Models like Claude or OpenAI, they're incredible, but they aren't perfect. Their APIs go down. Sometimes their performance changes unexpectedly because the underlying model gets updated. And that has happened to me and it, it hurts. This means you need fallbacks multiple providers, layers of verification, and even then, you still can't guarantee 100% accuracy. That's why going from 75% to 95% readiness, it really takes an exponential amount of effort. To give you a better sense of what I'm talking about, let's talk about some real world examples of how companies are integrating AI today. First up, Unlayer. They built an email editor with smart components powered by AI. You can use it to generate text, tweak tones, maybe add personalization. It's cool, but it's also additive. It's really not the core product itself. Next, we have Notion. Notion takes it a step further by embedding AI directly into its workflow. You can hit the spacebar and ask it to create a table, flowchart, continue writing for you. This saves time and sparks creativity. But again, it's enhancing an existing product rather than re really replacing it entirely. Now there's Canva, which also includes image generation. You can type a prompt and get graphics in seconds. Sounds great, right? Well, yes and no. While the feature is impressive, it's just not always reliable. You could burn through dozens of credits before you find anything usable. Finally, let's talk about vidIQ. 
Their AI promises to help grow your YouTube channel by generating thumbnails and optimizing titles. The concept is solid, but the execution, eh, not so much. I've tested the thumbnail generator multiple times, and honestly, the results are just not good. The point is, even companies with good ideas struggle to deliver consistent value with AI. Why? Well, it's because it's just incredibly hard to control these massive models and make them do exactly what you want. Speaking of struggles, let's address another issue, the overuse of the AI buzzword. Have you ever seen a company claim that AI makes their product better, only to realize it has nothing to do with the actual service? Like take this paddleboard rental company I came across. The website says AI ensures your rental experience is a breeze. What does that even mean? Do I care about AI when I'm renting a kayak? No. What I care about is the quality of the board, the price, and whether customer service will help me if something goes wrong. This happens all the time. Companies slap AI on their marketing materials without thinking about whether it actually adds value. And frankly, I feel like it's sometimes misleading. All right, so back to building meaningful AI products. First, you really do need to solve real problems. Not just tack on AI for the sake of it. For example, a company named Encino is using generative AI to create a banking advisor. If you're a banker, you can ask it questions about customers, loans, regulations, etc. It's practical, useful, and it saves time. But even then, building something like this is very hard. It requires deep domain expertise, robust data pipelines, and constant iteration. You can't just call an API and expect magic to happen. Second, you need redundancy. As I mentioned earlier, relying on a single provider is very risky. What happens if it goes down? Or it updates its model and breaks your whole integration? You need fallbacks. You need safeguards to ensure con continuity. Third, you need layers of verification. AI is creative by nature, which is both its strength and its weakness. To mitigate errors, you need systems that check the output, verify its accuracy, and redirect the model if it strays off course. All of this takes time, effort, and resources. Which brings me to my next point. Building AI-powered products is harder than most people realize. Executives often think, oh, it's just a matter of calling an API. But the truth is, getting 75% of the way there is super quick. Getting to 95%, that's where the real work is. Every percentage point feels like an exponential amount of effort. And even then, you'll never reach 100%. There will always be edge cases, unexpected behavior, and moments where the model just simply fails. That's why so many AI products stay stuck in the additive phase. They enhance existing features, but don't fundamentally transform the user experience. Truly automating end-to-end -end workflows with AI is a magnitude harder than building simple wrapper apps. And that's okay. It's important to set realistic expectations. If you're working on AI products, know that it takes time and it's going to take longer than you think. And if you're evaluating AI tools, don't fall for the hype. Look for solutions that solve real problems reliably. To wrap this up, I want to leave you with three key takeaways. AI is powerful, but it's not a silver bullet. You cannot expect it to solve every problem instantly. Number two, Building production-ready AI products is harder than you think. Prototypes are easy. Scaling them is really where the challenge lies. And number three, please focus on solving real problems. Don't just tack on AI for the sake of it. Make sure it adds tangible value. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. It would mean the world to me. I really do love AI, but there are just some times that I get so frustrated with how easy people around me think it should be when it's really not. 
those of us that are on the forefront of exploring and building with AI, yes, we've got it. We've got it good. We've got to work with all these great tools, but taking it to production and building a real product with it is way harder than any of them think. And I just wanted to share that and basically get feedback from all of you. Do you feel the same way? Are you dealing with some of the same challenges that I deal with? Are you dealing with people that will say something like, oh, I've got a prompt that makes that work great in Claude, only to have them hand you something that would never work in production? Anyway, that's it for today. Until next time, peace out.